What's happening guys? It's Nick from S2 Strategic Defense. Today, we're taking a look at the slide lock reload and how to improve in dry fire. Let's get started. All right guys, welcome back to S2 Dry Fire Friday. I don't know why I call it that. It's really not a thing, but it certainly can be. If you guys are finding these uh, dry fire videos helpful in your training, please like, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell. But most of all, go in the comments, let me know if this has been helpful for you and I'll keep doing them. I work from home on Fridays typically. I'm happy to come in the garage and do some training with you guys any single week, all right? So today, we're looking at the slide lock reload. And I think everybody pretty much already knows what a slide lock reload is, but in case you don't, I'll do a quick 30,000 foot view of it. Essentially, the slide lock reload refers to you guys being on range, pressing the trigger, you have one round that's left in the magazine, you press the trigger, that round goes out, there's nothing refeeding back into the gun, and the gun goes into an out of battery or slide lock configuration. That indicates that we need to drop that magazine, get a fresh magazine, insert that, let the slide come home, and get back on target and start doing work again. So that's basically what a slide lock reload or sometimes called an out of battery reload looks like. So I should also preface a couple different things. One, this lesson is going through the uh, perspective, the mindset of a concealed carry person, a defensive shooter, not a competition shooter. In my opinion, for competition shooting, a slide lock reload is a primary skill. You guys see it all the time. You constantly have to drop magazines, get a new magazine into it, get back on there, and getting better at it will certainly help you in shaving some time, getting through your stage faster, and then obviously moving up in the ranks. But for the concealed carry person, the slide lock reload isn't really a primary skill necessarily. I remember having John Korea from Active Self Protection on our Facebook page and doing almost a two hour live uh, conversation with him, and I asked him a couple questions. I said, John, how many videos have you reviewed uh, of non-law enforcement based violent encounters? And he said, uh, to date, about 32,000. That's a lot of videos that John's reviewed. My second question to him was, of those 32,000, have you ever seen a reload involved into you know, one of those encounters? And he said, to date, I've seen absolutely zero. As a CCW holder, I don't carry a reload for my gun. And, okay. and people go, wait a minute, why don't you carry a reload? Well, I have watched all those gunfights and I have never seen a CCW gunfight where a reload mattered. Not one of those 32,000 had a uh, slide lock reload involved in it where it actually even mattered. So keep that in mind. And if you go by the statistics, most gunfights in civilian base are open in five to, uh, five to seven seconds, it's over, three to five rounds on a good day. So you typically don't see it. Why should we train the slide lock reload if we're never going to see it? Well, I'll tell you. I like the slide lock reload because I think it's a combination of a lot of other small skills. One, you have to have the wherewithal to understand that the gun went in the slide lock. It's indicating that it needs more gas. So we have to drop that magazine. We have to defeat our garment. We have to get the next magazine, insert a small piece into a small place, get that slide to come forward reacquire a proper grip, reacquire a good sight package, and then have another good trigger press. So it's a lot of small skills that come together in a small drill, like what we call a one-for-one -one drill, or just in a slide lock reload uh, type of a drill. So keep that in mind as we move forward. So how do you improve at a slide lock reload? Well, when I watch people who struggle through getting better or faster at the slide lock reload, Majority of the time, it's not the physical action that's beating them, it's the mindset. They're constantly chasing speed, and speed hides mechanical deficiencies, and that's true in anything. Look, I'm a martial arts guy my entire life. Jeet Kune Do, Kali, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, kickboxing, I'm, my entire life, I've been involved with martial arts. And the first thing that I'll tell you is that speed hides the problem. So we have to come away from speed. We have to be able to analyze uh, what's going on, where the inefficiencies are, and then be able to make corrections based on what we see over there. And so I'll show you guys a few different mindsets today as we go through the training, and hopefully you guys will uh, appreciate this and help every single one of us get better. I know people like to see the gear that I'm using sometimes, so let me just kind of walk you through what I'm using today. 
That is my Glock 19X. There's nothing been done to that gun. It's factory sight, factory trigger, factory everything. Absolutely nothing done. The magazine that comes with it is also uh, one of the factory mags. It's a, just a plus two magazine. Holster wise, I'm carrying appendix carry. That is a tier one concealment Aegis holster. Uh, really enjoy that holster. It's been really good for me. I actually have an Aegis for a few of my other guns as well. For the data tracking part of today's video, I'm using the Mantis X10. I've been using Mantis stuff non-stop lately. I love this stuff. By the way, if you guys don't have a Mantis, get one. And you can find those through the online store at s2strategic.com. I'll place a link in the description. Sometimes I also use snap caps. Uh, you know, these are the A-Zoom style uh, snap caps. Those work for me just fine. I know some people love them, other people hate them. That's up to you. I don't really care. You guys don't have to use any of them at all. So that is the gear that I'm using today. All right, guys, so as we get started, the first thing I'll do is I'll kind of walk you through how I do it. You might have your own way of going about business, and that's perfectly cool. I'm not here as an internet critic, so do whatever works for you, but I can't do a video on how you do it. I can only do a video on how I do it, and it seems to work, okay? So if I'm on the trigger and the gun goes dry and it goes out of battery, right? The slide has locked back. The first thing that I'll do is I'll use my strong hand thumb. I'll hit the magazine release button, as that magazine's dropping out, I'm pinning my elbow back to my body, all right, and kind of turning this in. I like this particular position, right? Everybody calls it the workspace, right? I'm not Travis Haley. I'm not trying to cheat, you know, use his terms, but that seems to be a pretty good terminology for it. So it's back in my workspace. I like it here because in my peripheral, I can see the magazine well, and I can still see what's happening in front of me. So if I need to change focus for a second and look down at the gun, I can now have... Uh, focus on what's happening here and still see what's happening in the peripheral in front of me. That seems to work for me. I can go back and forth without having to put my head down or turn or any of that stuff. Maybe that's a tip for you guys. So we're bang, bang, click. The gun locks back. I'm reaching for the mag release. I uh, am pinning my elbow back to my body. At the same time, my support hand is making a 100-yard dash to defeat my garment, lift my shirt up, and I find the, the new magazine. Now, if I'm in like a competitive gear or range gear, I'm wearing my gun belt and that kind of stuff, the focus on how you grab the magazine is often off of the index finger, right? And that makes sense because there's space between my body and the magazine. And so I can get my whole hand back there and where my index finger lands is typically right on the flat of the magazine. But in a concealed carry configuration, I can't do that. There's too much happening here. Again, just me. And so what I learned was, and I actually got this tip from watching a video from Scott Jedlinski, uh, amazing competitive shooter, right? Tons of videos on YouTube, look him up. Is to think about my thumb. I focus on burying my thumb against my body and straight down to get behind that magazine. Then when I extract the magazine from my holster, my index finger kind of lands where it needs to be. All right, so let me kind of walk through this one more time. We're going bang, bang, click. The gun's gone dry. I hit the magazine release. I drive my elbow back to my body. I can still see what's going on. At the same time, I'm using my thumb. Uh, I defeat my garment and I use my thumb to get back to my body and I bury that behind the uh, new magazine. I get a good hold, come right here. I insert the mag into the mag well, okay? Now, how you release the slide is up to you. Some people like to do the slingshot method, perfectly fine. Some people use a slide lock, that's more like me. And then there's a third way, which you know I call it strong arming, right? And that's if you have a live round uh, that's in a magazine and you slam it in hard enough, that slide will come forward by itself. And so for me, I kind of use number two and number three together. I slam the magazine really hard to make sure it's seated. And at the same time, I'm sweeping with my thumb over the uh, slide lock to bring, to bring the slide forward. I remarry the grip. I try to roll this back forward. I'm already on the hunt for the front sight. Once I find the front sight, I'm starting to take up the slack on the trigger. I'm up against the wall. As soon as it's settled in and that's where I want it to be, it's trigger time again. Okay, so one more time. We're out, bang, bang, click. The gun's gone dry. Magazine release, pin the elbow back, defeat the garment, bury the thumb behind the magazine, extract the magazine, put it back into the magazine well, use the slide lock and strong arming that new magazine at the same time to get the slide to come forward, 
remarry the grip, roll forward, take up the wall on the trigger, press the trigger. So that's how I do it, okay? All right, guys, so our first mindset that we should be training on is what we call the slow mindset. If you guys are using a Mantis, you'll see that you have a time and a score. We don't care about the time. We care about the score on this one, right? Just as a general rule of thumb in time, we're looking for five to six seconds out of this thing. But the score, we want to keep that 90 and above. We really want to have a good, solid trigger press, okay? So just kind of keep that in mind as you go along. If you guys don't have a Mantis and you're using this on a shot timer, just set your part time to five, five and a half, six seconds, and walk your way all the way through this. The goal behind this is just to go inch by inch, recognizing every part of the movement, exactly what's happening, no fumbling around, none of those things. We just wanna take our time, no stress of being fast, we're not gonna fumble anything. Let's just get through this super duper slow. If you guys are using the Mantis, once you guys connect, go into your dry fire practice, scroll down to all the different drills, you'll see an option that says out of battery reload. That's the one that you guys wanna do. And the way we set this stage up is we have an empty magazine that's in the gun. We're already in slide lock configuration. And we have uh, another magazine that's in our holster, wherever you guys keep it. For me, uh, obviously I keep it on my waistline. If you guys have one of those pocket things, that's cool. If you have a separate magazine holster, that's cool too. However you do it, be in concealed carry mode, all right? Okay, so let's get started. Let me uh, turn on the Mantis and We'll, uh, I'll give you guys a few reps of just going super slow. Here we go. Okay. All right guys, so you see how slow I'm going with that, right? That's just a handful just so you guys can see that we're not paying any attention to the time. We just wanna have a good quality trigger press. That's everything that we're chasing after, right? And so going that slow allows us to really have good mechanics and just taking our time, not bum rushing anything. This could take you 10 seconds. It could take you eight seconds. Typically that five to six second marker is usually about right uh, as far as time goes, but we wanna keep the trigger press above 90%. We want to have a really high score when it comes to the averages there. All right, guys, so the second mindset that we're going to go through is pushing speed. We want to be about 75, 80, 85% of our maximum speed. We don't want to be uh, like going buck wild, but we also want to start pushing the threshold where it is a challenge for us. If you guys are using a timer, you want this to be somewhere between two and a half to three seconds total time, all right? So set your part time that way. If you're using the Mantis uh, X10 or X3, you guys can look at both the shot score and the time. Again, two and a half to three seconds is good, but the shot score itself, we wanna keep that above 70. Now what's gonna happen is you're going fast, you're gonna fumble some stuff, drop the magazine, get caught up in your hoodie, all that's gonna happen, okay? It's frustrating, but that's okay. We understand that that's what's going on. It would help you if you guys video it and actually see what went on, why, and make that correction, all right? So there's a quick tip for you guys as well. I'll show you guys what this kind of looks like. I'm gonna be pushing about, I don't know, 75, 80% speed, and let's see if we can keep the scores at 70 and above to make sure at least we have a acceptable trigger press. Here's what that looks like. Okay. All right, guys, so that's mindset number two. We were pushing speed, right? 75 to 80% of what we're doing. I could go a little bit faster. You guys saw I was running somewhere in the two and a half to three second marker, but my scores were still pretty high, 90 and above. I've gotten down into the two ones, two O's, one nines, that kind of stuff. But you start to see my trigger press start turning into 65%, 70%. The score starts to go down really bad. I like it at, at like this two and a half second marker. I know that I'm pushing myself. It's still a challenge. I still have to get it right, but I'm also taking the time to make a good quality 
trigger press. One of the beauties of the Mantis product line, you can actually see what that trigger press is like. All right guys, so here we are in the third mindset. And the third mindset is being smooth and fluid. The idea is to get all of those small motions that we have to blend into one another. In the slow, we really took our time and really felt out every single inch of motion and it was almost kind of robotic, right? In the fast one, we didn't care about the robotic motion. We we're just trying to get that magazine in and get on the trigger press. In this one, it's a balance of the two. Time-wise, you should be somewhere between you know, three and a quarter, three and a half to probably four and a half is probably about a good time. In the slow mindset, we were in the five to six. In the fast mindset, we're at that two and a half to three. Here, probably about three and a half to four and a half is pretty fair. We again want to focus on keeping that trigger press probably up in the 80s and above, okay, as an average. So I'll show you guys what that looks like real quick. All right guys, so that's how we train in three different mindsets for the slide lock reload. You had the slow, you had the fast, and then you had the smooth and fluid. If you guys are training this and kind of putting this all together, the slow, you should be doing 10 to 20. The fast, you should be doing like 10 tops, and then you should be spending 25 to 50 on the smooth and fluid. I think that's really where the growth happens. I know that's where I saw the most amount of improvement for myself. Going slow helped me understand where some of my mechanical deficiencies were, but going smooth and fluid allowed me to put it all together and start getting cleaner and crisper through the entire spectrum of movement. And then going fast just by chance happened to start getting better and better because my reps got better and better. So I really feel like that smooth and fluid mindset is really uh, good money. That's where you're gonna make the most amount of improvement. If this video helps you guys out, make sure you guys like, share, subscribe, comment down below, hit the notification bell. And if you guys have a Mantis and you guys would like to train with me, I just started a new Mantis group. You guys can look it up. It's called S2 Strategic Defense Shooting Group. I know, kind of clever, right? S2 Strategic Defense Shooting Group. Find us on Mantis. You guys can follow us there, join my group over there, and then hopefully we're gonna start putting out some challenges and maybe some prizes given away inside of that group. So hopefully we'll see you guys there. All right guys, if you have any questions, let me know. In the meantime, I will see you guys next time.